Today we're going to be showing you how to install an ethanol sensor for a P3 gauge on our Mark 7. If you are tuned and you have an E85 setup, you are going to want to make sure you monitor ethanol content. This is most importantly true if you do not have a flex fuel tune. Most flex fuel tunes will have this wired to the ECM of the car. If you don't have a flex fuel tune, you will want to make sure the ethanol content is high enough for your tune. Otherwise, you'll blow your engine up. Now in our car, we already have a P3 gauge installed. You can see it in the vent here. This is important because for this sensor to go to something, you have to be able to read it inside of your car. So this is gonna connect to that gauge. The kit that P3 has is this sensor and then this adapter, which allows it to communicate with the gauge itself. We're gonna be putting this sensor in this fuel line right here, and then we're gonna wire the rest into the car. Now, do you get that sensor located in our fuel line, we're gonna remove that. And then this is our fuel line that goes to the high pressure pump that we're gonna be working with right here. Now, because we have MPI, we have this adapter in here, which makes it a little bit more of a pain to deal with. If you'd like to keep your engine cover on the car, you don't wanna put it here. You could put it like underneath this area somewhere, but then your engine cover will not sit flush. So if you put it here, your engine cover still will be able to go on the car and be in a good spot. I'm just gonna, release the fuel pressure here. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. The key is we got to figure out where we're cutting this fella, right? Take our caps off, put them to the side. I'm going to stick this underneath this fuel line so we can figure out kind of where it's going to be. We're going to mark our hose on just on the other side of this ribbed area right here. The easiest way to cut a hose is with a hose cutter. I don't have one of those uh, so I'm using a razor blade and we're gonna work it back and forth. We'll get back to you when we're done. I thought I let all the fuel out and I, apparently I didn't. I'm gonna looby doob doob on the ends of this because uh, otherwise you're gonna have a hard time getting it in that hose. And we're gonna slide this in place like so. And these clamps do not come with their, their kit, so you will need them. So you can go buy yourself some of these clamps that are factory or alternatively, you could just go put some screw clamps on, which is probably what you're gonna do, is you're gonna go to Lowe's or Home Depot, get some screw clamps and, and hammer her down. So here is our sensor, it's in place. You can see it's firmly in place. This black wire is for the ground. And luckily, right here is a ground. So I've removed the nut that goes on here already. It's a 10 millimeter nut and you can expose the ground there, see that? I'm gonna clean this up a little bit because it's kind of kind of cruddy looking. This is our module that you need to make this sensor talk to your P3 gauge. So uh, we need grounds for both of them. So these black wires are the grounds. You can see I've twisted them together and I'm gonna crimp on. There's our both of our grounds. They're all grounded. And we got a heat shrink it, of course. And then that's gonna go inside this housing right here. You can see crisscross applesauce over the hole slider in place see just like that also i probably should have unplugged the battery when i was doing this because i just heard something turn on because i just connect reconnected a ground <laughs> i definitely have fault codes of some kind right here is this little module guy and we're just going to zip tie it right to the harness um, and that way it will stay and live right here okay these white wires i'm shortening here and these just get spliced together between that little module and the sensor. So I'm just gonna strip those guys back. We're gonna butt connect these two white wires together. You can kind of cut this to fit. I actually can tell you right now, I need to shorten that because this is way too long. So we'll get the old tug test. Okay, good. Okay, so what I wanna do is shorten it to where there's not a bunch of extra slack so you can see Look at how much extra slack there'd be. So if I, I butt connect it here, it'd just be like floating around. Okay, now that we're in, uh, this white wire, I don't remember, it's some sort of signal wire. Um, it's what allows them to communicate and talk together, blah, 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 like that. Right here, you have the red wires. These both need power. So you gotta power the module and power this. So these I'm gonna splice together, then run a wire around to the fuse box for power. It's all, now consider that crimped. And we are gonna need extra wire to make it from here all the way to the other side of the engine bay and then also into the car. 
most people are going to use uh, scotch locks or they're just going to use wire nuts that they should be in their walls from that they found in Home Depot, um, but you shouldn't. So at, least at minimum, I would say separate power wires. Like for example, I'm going to be using black for these other two wires. That's fine. But you, for the power wires, you probably want to keep them red. So we're going to run these wires through the cowl. So we take that hook that gasket off, we're gonna pull these clips out. This will allow us to kind of get underneath here. You can secure them by removing the cowl completely. I'm just gonna tuck them underneath. So this has to go inside the car and I'm waiting to cut this until I figure out the length, roughly. Don't worry about that. This wire is gonna run up and then right behind here uh, and then along the cowl here. We're gonna tape these properly together later, but I wanna just run them for the length first. We're gonna remove the battery. I've already loosened these terminals uh, because we need to access the holes to run through the firewall. So, oh, well, we're gonna, we're gonna need the battery out of the way to get that. I'm taking this battery tray out so that all you guys can see with better visibility. Uh, you probably don't need to do this, but so that you guys can see what's actually going on, I am gonna do it. So I ran the wire all the way around here, all the way over here, and I cut it. I cut it extra long, so this has to go in the car. And then we have to run another wire in the car. So I cut another piece of the end, I taped them together, and then we're gonna push these together in this snake into the firewall. Now with this out, you can see a little better. We're gonna be going back here underneath kind of where the battery tray would be. And you can see where the wiring goes into the firewall here. So you can see this is the wiring, there's a boot back here. So we're gonna take our big pointy thing and stab a hole through this grommet. All right, so I stabbed the hole. I used my stabby guy to poke a hole in that so that we can stick these wires through the stabby hole. So I'm lining this feller up with the stabby hole and then I'm gonna poke her on in. So you just need something, you could use like a coat hanger, honestly. Like th this is something that you definitely could do with things you have in your house. Um, oh, there we go. So you just gotta find your hole and then see, just feed in. Now, we gotta go inside the car, figure out where these fellers are coming out. Um, right underneath the dash, you just right on out right here, see? See this feller? I'm gonna get my phone out so I can show you kids where it comes out underneath. So I ran the wire right in here. It's behind the dash here and it comes out underneath. This is where our P3 module is. And this guy was plugged into that module. These guys were left over and just hanging around. You can see the, these aren't spliced at all. Uh, this brown one, I stripped it back and we're ready to splice it into our wire that comes from over there by the bottle. The brown wire to the brown wire. There you go, blue butt connector brown butt connector. Those wires are fed in, they're underneath our dash. We're gonna tuck them back, tuck them back. Now, we're ready. All right, so I've been taping. I taped these wires up. I spliced the blue wire as well. I'm gonna tape the red wire into it too, so it looks nice and fresh. Do you have to tape up your stuff so it looks professional instead of looking like a hobo was hired from the side of the road to do your wiring? No, it is advisable though. So right here, I ran it down from the cowl. These go into the body and these are gonna go, this is gonna go right here to the fuse box. Right here is a fuse that we added for MPI and right here is the one I'm gonna add for this power wire. I'm gonna use a 15 amp fuse because that's what I have. I'd probably use a five amp fuse if I was, if I was so inclined. All right, we're gonna start by taking this front panel off. What you do is stick a screwdriver in here. You can twist it a little bit and then just pop it on up and you see this is that little tab. You're gonna pry to get that passed. What I'm gonna do is there's tabs around the edge of this and I'm popping them up and then I'm pulling up as I'm doing it to get this whole fuse panel up and out of here. There we go. It's a little bit of pain to get out because these guides that are on the back of it are a problem. On the back of the screwdriver we're looking at, we had a terminal here where this goes, and then we stick fuse in and then we power our wire. I'm gonna run this wire down to under the back side of this fuse box and around. So this is a terminal. 
um, and this is a terminal crimper. You don't have this or this. So what I will do is in the description of this video, I will link to a repair wire terminal where you can buy the yellow wires from Volkswagen. They're, they sell repair wires that you can have the end like this that will be able to click into there. Um, so what you're gonna do is probably just uh, smush it in between the battery terminal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't do that. I definitely wouldn't do that, but you will. You could try to splice into a power wire somewhere. Don't do a thick one like with this battery wire or anything like that. <laughs> that would be a mistake. It's not gonna draw a lot of power, but like you don't want to stick random power wires from places. When you look, this is how it goes into the fuse, right? So this clicks in on the one side and then it goes in the fuse like that. Once your terminal is in, you can put your fuse in and then you're ready to go. Now, once you have your lines all in and you have a battery back in, the first thing you wanna do is cycle the key to make sure that you don't have a fuel leak at the fuel lines you just cut off. It's not leaking fuel. Great job, me. All right, first thing it says is to hold both buttons until you see config. Tap the right button until you see A and one, okay? Tap the left button until you see A1Y, okay? Tap the right button until you see A1DP, okay? Tap the left button until you see 999, oh shit. Where is it? No decimal point. All right, there we go. All right, no decimal point it says. Uh, tap the right button until you see A1.low, okay? It, uh, tap the left button to adjust zero Tap the right button, screen will move to A1, uh, A1HI. Oh, sh what happened? Tap the left button to adjust it to 100. One, 100, okay. Tap the right button, the screen will move, okay, to A1B. Now it'll be zero. Left button to zero. Then tap the right button, and it'll be A1. BH, okay? Okay, then it says 100 again, and then it says hold the right button and the screen goes blank. So there's coolant, right? 183 degrees, speed, that's how fast the car is going, zero miles an hour battery. But AN1, that's, that's our ethanol content, and that's a 10. Standard gas that comes out of pump is about 10% ethanol. So that's pretty standard, like, normal ethanol you pump out. That's why they have those like non-ethanol gas that has zero ethanol. Any gas you get at a pump has up to 10% ethanol, they say. It all has 10% ethanol, because it saves the money. After we put some proper E85 in here, our sensor is now reading at 70, which is our new ethanol content, which means our sensor is working properly. If you want more details about E85, we have an E85 video that explains how it works and tuning for it. We also have a flex fuel video that actually shows the process of flex fuel tunes and how they operate. And we have a P3 DIY as well. Two of them, as a matter of fact, I think one from a hundred million years ago and one that's actually pretty good. That was like maybe six months ago. Probably watch that one instead.